Good morning everyone, it's Gary here and welcome to this edition of the morning coffee video. And if you've been a fan of these in the past, you know these aren't the tutorial type of videos. These are totally unscripted and almost random in the things we do. But the difference between this type of video and the tutorials is that we're going to go through and do something from the start to the finish and create an objective and get it all done. So in this case, uh, people always ask me, how long does it take if I want to start using CloudNet 360? So I thought I'd put this little tutorial together in this format so people can see exactly how long it takes. Now, the reality is the gateway is already included. It's already part of the integration in the system. So if I wanted to, I could start a new account. I could create a product in about 30 seconds. I could take that link and send it to people and start collecting my money. I mean, so if you really wanted to say how quickly can you be in business with CloudNet 360, it's about 30 seconds. But that's not really reality because there's other things that we want to do other than just send a link out. If, if we just wanted to send a link out, we just go grab a PayPal link and call it a day. What we really want to do is say, how long does it take to actually get a reasonable business set up and when you're setting up a reasonable website, a reasonable business, uh, you want to be able to sell a product. You want to be able to nurture your leads if you're going to do a front-end marketing campaign. Uh, you need to be able to automate the payment, probably want to upsell a little bit, and then you need to manage the fulfillment, whether that's a digital product that you're going to put into one of our membership sites or through our digital download system. In this case, I'll be selling a physical product. And the reason I'm doing this website is because my daughter's soccer team is uh, running a fundraiser and I told them that I would help them achieve their goal that they want to get to, which is to hit the 75 sales mark and make it into the premier level so they can go to this party, whatever the heck it is. But anyhow, I told them uh, instead of going door to door and doing things the old fashioned way, why don't you set up a website and set up a process where you can sell these things online, make it easy for people. Because that's really the name of the game in, in business is to make it as easy as possible for people to give you money so they give you more of it. It's why your upsells have to be one click. Your reorders need to be one click. Everything needs to be really simple so that people can give you more of their money. Uh, order pages have to be mobile responsive, etc. So anyhow, um, like I said, these are unscripted, unedited. Uh, you'll see me in all my mistakes. Uh, you'll discover that I stare at my keyboard instead of actually seeing what I'm typing on the screen. So just bear with me here. Now, the other thing I want to make sure you understand is that I'm going to use our website. You could also use a landing page for this, but I want to do a few more things than just a simple landing page. Again, I want to have this uh, fulfillment managed through our fulfillment system. I want to uh, uh, do everything necessary to run more of a complete business than just a simple landing page offer. If you wanted to, you could use your own website as your main website and then use our website system for this type of purpose, or you could use our website system as your only website, as a lot of people do already. But anyhow, let's get started. And what I'm going to do is, uh, again, show you how I'm going to set up the website. I'm going to connect this into the CRM. I'm going to connect this into the fulfillment system and I'm going to make it so I can start collecting orders. And um, I'm going to do this fairly quickly. And the other, oh, the other part that I want to mention is that with these websites, the structures are all very simple. Our template structures are very simple. If you're selling online today, you have to have a simple website structure because it has to be mobile responsive. It has to work uh, no matter what device people are, are reaching you with. So the real magic to the websites today comes in the form of how they look. You know, what do the graphics look like? And or in this case, the video message. So this website that I'm going to make is really dependent upon a video and that's actually a very effective way of selling so you know what i'm going to be doing for these fundraiser websites is exactly what many of you should be doing selling your full-time product anyhow let's get started and i'll log into this account so I, this is a brand new account that i created for her uh, it's never been used for anything i mean this is exactly what you would see if you signed up for a trial
Okay, now the first thing I want to do is get the website started. There really isn't any order that you have to take these things in because as you run your business, you're going to be changing things, adding things, modifying things anyhow. So, you know, you can add your products, you can add your website first, you can do your CRM first and then reconnect it to the products or, you know, again, there's really any order that you can use and it'll all work. And that's the great thing about a system like this is it's all incremental. You can start small and make it bigger and better and better and better. And it's actually something I recommend. When you try to create this master plan from the beginning, it can, it can create paralysis and people don't get anything done. So this is really a case where the sooner you get going, uh, the, least, the, the less you do, the better, because you're going to get into business faster. Anyhow, I'm going to start with my website and then I'm going to add some products and connect it uh, to the CRM. Well, actually, I'm going to do it in reverse. I like to start from the back end, from the end of the process and work forward rather than the front of the process and work backwards. But that's just my preference. You can do it any way you want and it'll all work fine. So I'm going to come in here. And again, this is a new account, so it's uh, asking me to choose a template and telling me a little bit about what the template will do and, and what your options are okay and again you can either use our our templated storefronts as your only website as a uh, store connected to your existing blog or content management site or you can use it as your primary site or not at all i mean again it's up to you some people will just use it for the landing page creators that we have built into the storefront but anyhow i'm going to create one and now i'm going to name it And you can use this as a subdomain as I'm going to use it. So I don't want to have to hook up this uh, website to any outside hosting. We host all of our storefronts on our dedicated servers. So it's very high performance. And if I wanted to, though, I could make this my top level domain and we just modify the uh, URL, the actual website name that you want to use so that you don't have this set up as a subdomain. But to start off, you can set it up as a subdomain. And again, then you can change it later at any point in time. Okay. And that's it. Now I'm just going to close that out and we're going to come back in and it tells me that it'll be ready to go in about five minutes. Okay. So while we're waiting for the storefront to be done, and uh, the systems to get set up. I'm just going to come into the CRM and I'm going to add my emails because what I always want to do with anything I sell is make sure that I follow up with people. So I want to have a product specific uh, reply and well, sometimes it's not always product specific. Sometimes it can be fairly generic, but usually I want a product specific reply because there's things I want to do after a person buys. After they buy, I want to reconfirm the um, intelligence of the sale, right? We don't want people to get uh, post sale remorse. We want to make sure that we're communicating. They understand what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, the fact they made a good purchase, why they made a good purchase, basically reaffirming all the things that you told them before you sold them the product. In this case, I want to tell people how the fundraiser is being managed and what we're selling here is popcorn. So I need to tell people that the purchase has been done and that there's a lead time on the popcorn. And as soon as it's ready, it'll get sent out to them. You know, real basic things. So the first thing I'll do in a new account is come in and set up my profile because um, as a time saver, I don't want to have to type this information in every single time. So the great thing about profiles, as I've talked about in other tutorials, is the time saving uh, capacity that they provide that you can just put a profile in. You can have as many profiles as you want. It's a great time saver. The name here is just for organizational purposes. Uh, no one ever sees this. And then this will be the name that it comes from. So of course you want to make sure this is easily identifiable from you. And the reply to email address. I'm not even sure what their email address is. So I just created one for her. 
again, these are uh, teenage kids, so uh, they're not as well set up as a normal person would be. And now I get to put my signature in here. And typically you'd put in your you know, salutation and your probably your website, phone number, all those different things that you'd put into any one of your emails so people can, get, uh, can reach you. Uh, this signature is gonna be very basic because again, uh, the nature of what we're doing here. And I'm just gonna put in our office address here. Normally this would be your business address, but again, a teenager is not gonna have a business address and I'll just use the office address for this. Now for your FTC compliance statement, if you're not selling affiliate products where you need this, you can just ignore it and then I'll just save the profile. Now again, the great thing about the profiles is you can have as many as you want. You can have uh, multiple businesses running through multiple people and then you get to share all the content. You can just combine content out of your content library with the profiles and then you won't have to uh, create all this duplicate content. Okay, so we'll come in, we're going to create an email category. And again, it's just like a uh, folder. It's just for organizational purposes, nothing more. And I'll just... And again, anytime we name something, this is all for organizational purposes that you'll see only. The customers never see this. So you don't have to worry about what you call it. You just have to make it convenient for yourself. Oops. Okay, now this part Again, we're not going to do this for a fundraiser, but if you notice the split test button, you know, these are fantastic because I can now split test every single autoresponder, every single broadcast, and really become a smarter marketer to, to truly understand what my audience responds to. You see all these um, test cases and studies and all the rest of it about what you should be doing uh, as the golden rule for email marketing. But the reality is there's only a golden rule for your audience, not for everyone's audience, because your audience will respond differently uh, based on the product, the service, the relationship you have with them. So what you have to do is constantly split test. And you know, typically when I send out a email, I'm putting a minimum of four subject lines into every email because I want to see what people are responding to most. And when you do this over a fairly short amount of time, you're going to see some very distinct patterns. You're going to see very clearly the types of things people respond to as your audience. And I assure you, they are not going to be the same as everyone else's. Now you can either write these emails right into the HTML editor, and that's typically what I'll do just because it's convenient. And then I save them into the content library. Now, the thing with the content library is that you can now use these emails with a combination of different profiles to personalize them completely differently for every single team member that you have or for different businesses. And you can use them as broadcasts, you can use them as autoresponders, you can use them as just one-off emails that get sent over to your customers. Now the tricky thing with any of these editors online is you have to watch that when you write something in a separate editor, like a word processor, is actually an editor. So when you write something in Word, when you copy and paste it into an editor, you're actually copying and pasting a whole bunch of garbage HTML. So it's really a not a good way of doing it. If you're going to use Word, you have to then use Word to put it into a text editor, get rid of all the HTML, then paste it into your HTML editor. Again, for me, it's just so much easier to come into the content library, um, write it just the way I want it to look, and save it and call it a day. Now, watching me type is pretty boring, especially because I stare at the keyboard, not at the screen, and make a lot of typos. 
Uh, so what I've done is just prepared this so we can just save a little bit of time here. So anyhow, I'm going to copy this. I saved it in the HTML version. So I'm going to come into the source and just paste it in as HTML. And oops, looks like I missed a letter. Hi. Okay. And that's it. So you'll see that we have our merge code here for the personalization. And then here is where our signature goes. So that signature that's going to pull the signature out of the profile that we use for this email and inject it right in here so I don't have to type that every single time again just a little uh, time saver that uh, will save you a minute here a minute there and over the course of the year it's a uh, huge time saver okay now we have other things we can put in here but again um, for this purpose I don't need a lot of things so I'm just going to save the content and that's it now I'm going to come in and you see my thank you and I'm going to add a new one as a reminder. Normally when I set up a product, there's a whole sequence of emails that come out. They'll get the thank you and then at least, I don't know, six or a dozen emails after that explaining the product, explaining the benefits and again explaining why it was a smart purchase. And again, I'm just going to copy this paste it into the source. Okay, there's my little email and save it. Okay, now that we have these emails created, let's go add them into a funnel and a sales path. So we'll come down here. And again, we give you a default item, but let's just change that one and use it. Here again, no one will ever know what this name is. This is all for your organizational purposes only. And now I'm going to add a sales path to it. Actually, what I'm going to do is use the one that's already in there by default. So we'll just click on it. You can have multiple sales paths per funnel, but for our purposes, we don't really need it. And I'm just going to select the start point. I'm going to add an email. And I'm going to take my profile. There's only one profile there, but again, you could have as many profiles as you choose. And I'll take my content. And I'm not going to put a delay on it because I want this thank you email to go out immediately. Now I'll add a uh, new status point. You can do this in a multitude of ways. Oftentimes I will uh, just take all my emails and hang them off the same point, the same start point. You can also have multiple status points. It's all how you want to structure this. And there's a lot of different reasons you do it different ways, but uh, there's a lot of flexibility, so you can do it any way you want. And again, I'm just going to add this email, select my profile, take my email, and in this case, I'm going to put a five day delay on it. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now the sales path is created, and when we create our products, we will connect the sales path to the product so that after a person buys, they are automatically added to this sales path and the sales funnel, and these automated tasks will trigger. All right, so basically we're done in the CRM for now. All this is set up. We have our content, we have our sales path, we have our automated emails that are going out, and now let's go into the uh, website builder and we'll build out the website we'll add the products into it we'll connect the products to the autoresponder and we'll also connect the products to the fulfillment center so that after I sell these products I can have a system to easily manage the distribution the shipping and um, 
to make sure that my products get to the people. So we'll head on over to the store now. Back to our automation center and I'll click on the website with storefront. And now we have to pick a template. And again, there's a whole bunch of different templates in here, uh, different styles. But uh, what I'm gonna do is just take one of these platinum templates and these are fairly simple in structure. Again, the whole look, feel, flow is very basic. Uh, and it really comes down to what videos you put in and what graphics you put in and then you customize it and brand it uh, to fit your needs. What we've done is given you a shell that is all fully responsive and you know the things you put into this website will then show up well on a tablet, on a cell phone, on a laptop, whatever it is that people are going to view your website and, and that's real important. Now for the sake of what I'm doing I just want to choose a uh, a template that has uh, video, right? Video based at the top. So, you know, there's different structures that we can choose from. And if you don't like the structure you choose, you can always go and change it, right? You can pick it, try it out. If you don't like it, just come back and take a different one. Now, I don't recommend doing that too much. What you wanna do is find your structure and then build it out because some of these structures are so different. You know, some are video based, some are slider based, some are, you know, all, all different types. And if you build out the entire website and then you change it, it's not just going to change one to one. So you're going to have to do, you know, basically a refresh and, and start your work over again. So make sure that when you choose your template, you choose one that you like and that's going to work and then play with it a little bit. And then if you continue to like it, then build it out. But don't put a lot of work into it if you're not sure that you like it. So I'll just activate this one. And this is all fine. I'll just complete it. And we'll go to my site dashboard. And this is very similar to the Master Automation Center. There's a lot of things that you can do from either uh, this control panel or this control panel. But what you'll note are the different functions that come in here. And you'll see how some of these other things are different too, like the way the products are managed. Uh, when you're using a automated website, more of a storefront shopping cart style, there's gonna be different things that come into play in this site that don't come into play when you're using your own site and just connecting CloudNet 360 to it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is start off uh, just by adding my products because again, I, I work a little bit backwards. I work from the back to the front and I wanna have some products to put into my website before I spend a lot of time on the website. Now, one of the things that I uh, wanna show you before we get into building the website though is this tool here is called Snagit. I'm not really a Photoshop person. And again, this is just for a kid's website uh, fundraiser. So I'm not going to um, worry too much about it. You can see I created uh, just added this logo into this background and there's some pixelation here and, and this isn't full quality If I were doing this for a professional website I'd have a graphic artist clean this up a little bit and just make sure the cutouts better and you know again Some of these things it's not really professionally done Snagit is a great tool though for cutting out pictures resizing them you can shape them It's basically a tool that gives you some of the capability of Photoshop without having all the skill set of having to learn Photoshop so I've used Snagit to resize my product images and the optimum size is uh, no greater than 400 pixels wide. And you can see down here exactly that I've hit 400. Now all you really have to do is come in and hit resize image and then set it to 400, apply and that's it. So it's real easy to set these images to the right size. Now the other thing I've done with Snagit is just uh, as I've shown you here, I've created these YouTube covers and I like to put things in here like press the play button to make it very obvious that people need to press the play button to watch the video so they don't think it's just an image on the website. And then of course I just made a real simple logo. Now let's go add these products into our website and continue on. So we'll come into add product. And I already have this information. I actually took the text, the descriptions off of the website of the fundraising company. So again, I'm just going to paste that in there. And I'm going to put the price in. I'm going to accept the pay later option. The pay later option gives us the ability to accept checks, uh, accept 
cash or any other means that people are going to use to pay you. But this lets you get them committed through the website. They get to choose from the website, submit the order, and then of course mail you the check or you can collect in person or whatever you're going to do in a fundraiser type environment. This also works well when you're doing installations. And now we'll come in and there's a couple things that we want to set. So what we want to do is put in a short product description. And because this is a storefront, you can put in a short product description, which is what I'm going to do. And again, I have to be careful how I paste this in so I don't carry a bunch of crummy HTML into this description. But we also have a long description. So when people click on more information, uh, they'll come into a different screen and see the long product description. In this case, we're just selling popcorn. It's a fundraiser. There's no reason for me to put that long product description in there. But I do want to take shipping into account. So I'm going to calculate shipping and I'll show you how to set up the shipping here in a, in a few minutes. Um, but I am going to tell the system that I want this product to be uh, considered for shipping. And now the last thing I'm going to do is add my product image. So I'll come into images, select, upload, and now I could add a description for this image. I can add multiple images, or if I wanted to, I could actually add a video, which is a great thing to do if you're selling physical products. Give people a personalized tour through the product, and it's a really powerful sales tool. And you don't really need to have a studio or anything like that. All it really takes is a basic camera, as simple as it can get. It can even be your cell phone, but take that video, Put it on to each and every product and let people see all the details and let them hear the description as you describe and demonstrate the product. But obviously for popcorn, we're not going to do this. And I'm just going to come back and, oh, whoops, I almost forgot to connect it to the CRM. Obviously after someone buys this product, we want to put them into our sales funnel. So I'm going to come in here and simply click and click. And now whenever someone buys this product, it will be added to the VHHS fundraiser and into the initial sales path. We'll save changes. And now we'll go add our additional products. Let's come back into manage products. And here you see my product. These are the default, let's call them dummy products that were added into the website, just so that there's products in here when you first get the template. And what I'm going to do is just delete all those. And there we go. We just have our one product left. Okay, now let's go back in and add additional products. And you'll see this will only take me a minute. I've got seven products I need to add in here. And we'll just do the exact same process every single time. We'll come in, change the price name, add our description. Add it to shipping. We may as well put it into our CRM right away just to save some time. And of course, we'll upload the image.
and let's go back into our products. And now I've got three of the seven uploaded. This is pretty boring. I'm going to stop the recording just for a minute to save you some time because it's just the same process over and over and over. It's very quick, but uh, I don't think you're learning anything watching me do this four more times. All right, now that you see I've got seven products loaded, the eighth product I've loaded is an important one though. What I always do is create a, a test product and I put it in for just a small amount of money like 25 cents or a dollar. And I use this to actually test out my setup because before I go live with something, when I set up my payment gateway, I wanna make sure that I can actually collect the money. And the only way you can actually test this is to process a transaction using a real known card, I mean a real live card that is known good, which happens to probably be yours, and then just process a credit card transaction buying a product from yourself and prove that you can get the money from a credit card into your payment gateway. It's the only way to truly accurately test it and it always amazes me how many times people will not test their final setup and then they lose sales because they are not able to transact with a credit card. So anyhow, always just add a test product in there so that you can do these real live transactions with your credit card. All right, at this point, what I'm going to do is start working on my website. So I'm gonna go back to the home screen and I'm gonna click on the website builder. And now I'm gonna come into UI configuration. And you'll see that a lot of these things, well, this whole thing is really point and click. Now, some of these things I don't even want, so I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, for example, I'm not going to use affiliates, so I'm just going to deactivate it. Save it. I'm not going to set up a coaching site, so I'm going to get rid of it. I'm not going to use the customer portal, so I'm going to get rid of it. And I am going to leave the cart because I think that people like that on their site. I'm not going to set up the social media. So again, just get rid of it. Usually on a real live website, all these things would be handy to have and I wouldn't want to get rid of them. Same thing with the menu. There's very few things I'm going to keep on here. Uh, this is just going to be a one page website. So I will just get rid of all these things. And I'm not going to have people opt in, so I'll get rid of this. And here's an interesting problem. You know all those products I deleted? Well, those all would have showed up here in the middle of the page, except I deleted them all. And if you notice all these other things I've deleted, once you delete them, they're off your point and click management screen. So what do you do then? I mean, do we have a problem or can we fix this? Well, fortunately we can fix it. And all I have to do is come up here because we can do everything manually as well as point and click. So what I'm gonna do is click on widgets and blocks. And you see here are all of our widgets and blocks and all the different things that we need to work with on our website. So here you see this home page featured products. This is what I deleted by deleting all those products off of my home page. Uh, again, I shouldn't have done that, but I did. And this is what we'll do to recover. So we'll just click on this setting and we want to add the products. So what I'm going to do is just take my products that I want to keep and I will assign these and put them on my home page. Save the changes. And again, you can see how configurable this whole thing is. A lot of these things are point and click simple, but I don't want you to think that you can't come in and just do an amazing amount of customization to this website by coming into the settings and clicking on different things and changing things around and, and really doing a lot of different creative things. And this is what I went back, uh, this is what I'd like to go back to at the beginning of our discussion. When you pick out a template, you're picking out a structure, but within that structure, you can change things so dramatically that you don't need to have a thousand or 500 or even a hundred different structures. It's like a house. You just need some basic floor plans. And then within the floor plans, you can modify things, customize things, decorate things, brand things in your way to make your website a hundred percent unique. So anyhow, let's go back into our website builder now. And voila, there they are. 
okay? But do I really want this product up on top? No. So I'll show you how easy this is to fix. So we'll come back in here and we shall just drag and drop and move things around and do things differently. I'm gonna take this and push it down and save my changes. And I can save this in any order that I choose. So back to our website builder. And there you go. Now we have this at the bottom where we want it. And I'm not going to do a photo gallery. So again, I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to get rid of our testimonials. I'm not going to have live chat. Or click to call. But obviously all these things are already built into your website. You can use them if you choose or you can just click and get rid of them. And of course if you want it back, you just click to get it back on your site. It's literally that simple. All right, what else do we have here? Okay. Now this probably doesn't apply, so I'm going to change this. I'm going to get rid of this image and I'll put in some other text. Here we go, that's fine. Hmm, now do we really want great products for a little money? Eh, probably not. Let's go back and fix that. And we'll just call this gourmet caramel corn. There you go, that's better. All right, now what else can we do here? Well, let's put a logo in there. There we go, that looks a little bit more like a soccer team. And last but not least, as I said, this whole website is predicated on the quality of the video. So what I'm going to do, of course, is change this to be my video. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that we have ways to improve this video link, but this one should work fine. Oops, I should have opened up a new tab. And there we go. Now we have our video in place of the demo video. Okay, now if we take our link Let's go take a look at what this thing looks like live. And what I like to do is always use a separate browser. When I'm working on the admin section of something, I want to get away from that browser and I want to see it like a customer. Okay, so here's our website, it's live. 
Everything looks good. I play the video. Hi, it's Zoe and I'm on the Vernon Hill soccer team and I'm raising money for soccer equipment, uniforms, and other team expenses. We're selling gourmet popcorn and I need your help to meet our team goal. Check out the flavors below and... Okay, and of course we have the soft add to cart. And we can add more. And then we go to the checkout. And the checkout is already pre-configured. Kind of. You see it carries over the formatting. But there's other things that I want to do here now. You see all this extra stuff. I really don't want all these forms in here. And I want to put special instructions in there. We still have to be able to pay for this stuff. So let's go and take care of those things next. Okay, so I'm just going to go back into our main section, our main master automation admin center and show you a couple things. Now the first thing, we always include a real-time gateway with every account, okay? It's all set up, ready to go. You already have the ability to just start processing credit cards immediately. But in this case, I'm going to switch over to another account that I like better just because we get a, a lower rate. Uh, WePay is great. Our built-in one is, is fantastic. It has no monthly fee. It has about a 2.7% uh, finance rate. But once you start processing more and get into a higher volume of sales, then it's worth getting a different type of gateway where you do pay a monthly fee, but then your rate gets lower. And once you start processing high volumes, then it's worthwhile. When you're first starting out, this one's fantastic because you're paying a marginally higher rate, but because you're not paying anything monthly, it actually comes out cheaper. But no matter which gateway you use, you still have to come in and you have to click on the credit cards that you want to accept. So in this case, I'm going to take Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. I just move them over there and save the changes, okay? Now, like I said, I'm going to come in and I'm going to select a real-time gateway, the one that I want to use. So I'm going to come into PayLeap and I'm gonna click Add. And all I have to do now is copy and paste the API login ID and transaction key. Because this information needs to be encrypted and stay private, I'm gonna stop the video for just a second. So I've copied and pasted the login ID and transaction key into my system, but what I need to do is activate it. Now, the thing is, this is always encrypted. You won't be able to see your own ID and you won't be able to see your own transaction key once it's pasted in here, and either will anyone else. So this encryption is real important. We wanna make sure that your account is always safe. Now, you can also do a PayPal payment processor at the same time as your credit card. And this is a great way to, to set up your account, get a real-time gateway and offer PayPal so the people that want to pay you with PayPal can do so on the same order form. Now, in this case, I'm just not going to do it because she doesn't have a PayPal account. Uh, our gateway rotator, what this does for you is allows you to have multiple gateways. And if you're running a huge product launch and you need to make sure that you don't run too many sales to one gateway, this allows you the chance to spread it out. So it's very nice. And also the mobile payment gateway. You can run a card swiper and or just use your, your cell phone through our mobile app to process credit cards. Some of these will make you get a second account. The reason I like PayLeap, the reason we have a strategic alliance with them and whoops, I don't want to do that, and can get you better rates is that we can run one account for our website through our standard gate, um, gateway processing and also use it for our mobile, unlike authorized net where you have to have two accounts, which is extremely inconvenient. Okay, anyhow, I'm going to save all these changes. I'm just going to go back and make sure I did it. Okay, so we're good there. And now we've got an active gateway. We have credit card acceptance. Okay, so that's done. Now what I want to do is come back in and set up my shopping cart. So I'll come into general settings and I'm going to come into checkout order page. And by default, if you have a new account, it's set up to responsive checkout process. If you have an older account, you may still be using the standard checkout process or the optimized checkout process. But the one you want to use is the responsive checkout process because this is the one that's mobile responsive. 
And unless you don't think people are going to buy from you through a mobile phone, you should use the others. But if you think you're going to have web visitors buying through their cell phone, which they are, you better be using the responsive checkout process. Okay. And now there are other things that you can do, uh, for example, and you can change these at any time. Again, this is always able to go from one way to the other and back to the other way again. So I want to show my product image in the cart, yes. Show coupon box, well, I don't offer coupons, so I don't want that. I don't offer gift certificates, so I don't want that to show up. Um, shipping address input, yes. If you're not shipping a product, remove it. It's just one less thing on your order page. Show update cart button, yes. Top bar, nope, I don't need that because in this case, I don't want it. Show clear cart, yes. Show continue shopping button, yes. Customer portal sign in, no, we're not using the customer portal. And here is our special instructions. Oh, actually, I need to make sure, show special instructions on how did you hear of us boxes. That I actually need to switch to yes. And of course, you can change this button. You can put any text in here that you want. Okay, we'll hit save changes. And that's it. Except I still want to reduce the clutter on my order page. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to modify what gets shown when people see the order page. Now there's a few things we have to have, like first name, last name, and email. Although you don't even have to have email, but I, I would recommend keeping that required. I'm not a big fan of the confirmation. Uh, phone number is good, company, um, we're selling to consumers. We don't need the company name and we don't want to confuse people. Work phone number, we don't need it. Fax, we don't need it. Address line two, again, it depends where you're shipping, but in this case, we don't need it. Country, we're only shipping in the US, we don't need it. If you're using a real-time shipping processor, you know, like UPS, USPS, any of those, where we're using the real-time shipping rates, you have to leave the country on, otherwise they don't work. There's an API that goes out, gets real-time rates, and again, if you don't keep the country selected, those APIs just simply don't work because they're global shipping agents and they need to know what country you're shipping to. And uh, city, state, zip, okay, that's it. Now, if you wanted to, of course, there's custom configurable fields that you could add to the order page as well as drop down boxes and all sorts of things. But what I'm trying to do is keep my order page as simple as possible to minimize the amount of information people need to enter. Uh, I'm not even going to make these mandatory because if they don't want to put them in, they don't have to. So now I've changed my checkout order page, customized my fields. Let's come back in here. And you see how much information we were asking for before. And now let's see if I can, uh, let's do this, go back home and we'll add another product to the cart and we'll check out. And now you see how much shorter it is. See just a few pieces of information I have asked for shipping details. And again, we're going to get to this in a minute. That's the last thing we have to do. Special instructions and payment. Obviously, people will go through this step by step. If PayPal were an option, it would be right in this drop down window and the PayPal icon would be here. But right now, they can pay with Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or the Pay Later option. So they really don't even have to put in a credit card number if they don't want to. Okay. So now let's go back into our system and do a few more modifications. And for the purposes of the shipping that we're going to do, we're just going to put in a flat rate shipping. So again, we're going to come back into cart settings and we're going to configure our shipping. And this is our master address. Of course, this is your starting address. You would put in where you're shipping your product from. If you're shipping it from your physical location, then leave it as is. But maybe you're shipping it from some other location. So make sure that this location reflects where you're actually shipping from. And then when you calculate where you're shipping to, of course, the API needs to know that information. So the from and then the to. Again, there's more videos on this specific information. So I'm not going to cover everything here. What I want to do is use the 
advanced flat rate. So I'm gonna configure this and I'm going to have three different options. And one is going to be zero cost. Please drop it off for me. I'll pick it up and then um, Let's try this, mail via USPS. Now I'll enable this one and update it. You can only run one shipping type at a time. You can't have flat rate going at the same time you have real time, uh, for example. Okay, now you see we're using flat rate, it's configured. And now let's go back here. And I'm going to go to my home and we'll go through this process again. Add it to the cart, check out. And now we can look at our shipping details and you can see that now people can choose between drop it off, I'll pick it up or mail via USPS. Okay, next step. Well, I can't go to the next step because I haven't put in the personal information. But anyhow, that's it. Now what we can do is have a full operational website that is selling a product and collecting credit cards and connected to a CRM and managing the orders right through the system. So let's go ahead and do the final step, which is to actually test this out and make sure that I can actually collect money for the products that I'm trying to sell and ensure that I have everything set up right. I mean, really, there's a lot of moving pieces. I'm not even sure that I did them all correctly. So let's go ahead and check it out. So let's come back into our home. Oh, actually, I don't wanna do that. Let's go back into the cart. And let's remove all these things. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is use my test product And again, if you want to use a real product, you could. I just want to keep the size smaller because then I don't even bother to go back and do the refund for a quarter. It's not even worth my time. So we'll just come in with the information. and the moment of truth. There we go, fantastic. Well, it's almost fantastic. Turns out we still have some things in our thank you page that we really don't need. Now again, if you're running a full-blown website, you probably want these things, but if you're just running something simple like we're trying to accomplish, then I'll just come in and get rid of them. These things are all very easy to do and it's all point and click. So I have two ways of getting to our site settings. I can either come into site settings and go there directly, or if you're inside of here and you just want to come up here to widgets and blocks, it's the same thing. So I'm going to get rid of all these right sidebar settings. So let me just put these two screens a little bit more side by side. You can see we have our opt-in, right? So we don't want our newsletter opt-in. Our blog, our recent blogs are there. We don't want that. Our store locator is right here. I'm going to get rid of that. Our top keyword search, we don't need that. 
We don't need this listing menu. We don't need our blog categories. And we don't need our manufacturers. Okay, now those things are all shut off. And now this will be clear. Okay. Now there is one more thing that we could do. And I kind of like this because again, for a fundraiser, it's not that big of a deal, but on your order successful page, there's a couple things that you can do. You can put in your contact information. So if someone buys something and has an immediate question, well, they can reach you right away. Or you can also put facts in here, FAQs, and you can put in FAQ titles, uh, questions, and then answers. And then these are all expandable. So this gives your customers two immediate ways to get information about the product they just purchased in case they have any questions or concerns about what they just bought. So now we have our entire process complete. Let's go back in here and let's make sure the order made it into our system. Check our orders. There it is, um, Z-Test, there's the order. And this is one of the features that I think many people forget about. What you want to be able to do is process orders very easily for your customers. Now that I have this order in the system and I've used this credit card, all someone has to do as a merchant, I could call up and say, hey, reorder that product for me. And then I don't even have to give them my credit card. Or, you know, whatever the case might be, you can always come in, click on rebill, new order. And by default, it puts the last product ordered into the order but you don't have to do it that way. I can come in here and I can add this product in and I can add this product in and I don't want the test product in anymore. And now I just process the order. And now you can see how everything is already pre-populated and the credit card information is in there already and all I have to do is hit submit order and it's done. So this is a really great way for you to make it easier for your customers to buy from you again and everyone knows the easier you make it to buy from you, the more they'll do it. All right, that's it. We have started from nothing to a complete website with fulfillment, with order processing, connected to our autoresponder. The emails will be sent out automatically. People add it into the CRM. In fact, let's go ahead and show you how that looks. Since you've made it this far in the video, we may as well go a few more minutes. Here I am in here, and there's my order. And now, oh, I see. I was gonna say, now I'm confused because why wasn't I added to the sales path, but our test product wasn't connected to the CRM. If I come back into our store and look at our products. And I'm actually not in the store right now, but it's the same, I get the same type of capability in either places. See, it hasn't been selected. If this would have been selected, I would have been put right into the funnel and sales path. All right, so these are the uh, processes you need to follow if you wanna have a complete business. Again, can you just take a product link and send it to someone and, and start selling within 30 seconds? I mean, it's literally that easy. You could come in, add a product, come in here, take this product link, copy it, and put it into a browser window. Right? If someone clicked it, it would take them right into your shopping cart. Now, this is a default design because this is what it would look like if you're not using one of our websites. You'd have to brand this and, and do all these things to match your existing website. When you use one of our templates, we provide all that functionality and customization already included as part of the full process. So again, this is what it takes to get up and running. If you already have a website, it's going to take you less time because half the time, or maybe more, we spent just modifying the website and getting the products uploaded and, and that sort of thing. But it's a very short, very simple process, and I can build on this over time. You know, that's the most important thing. I don't have to have everything done on day one. I can build on this over time. I can add more sales paths. I can do more if-then logic. I can add surveys in. I can add opt-ins in. I can do all these different things, but I can do it in incrementally. I don't have to do it all at once. I've spent a total of about, let's see, where are we in this video? About an hour and five minutes from start to finish. So it's not a very large amount of time. And I didn't do anything very complicated, but I have a website. I have products loaded. 
I have sales that can come in. I've got my thank you page done. I have the fulfillment done. I have people going into a CRM, into a funnel and sales path. I can go back and send newsletter broadcasts to them. I have the profile done. I have content in my content library. So in a about just a little bit over an hour, we've done a heck of a lot as far as creating a business that is actually capable of selling something and actually looks reasonably professional. Uh, again, we could have put more effort into this thing. We chopped out most of it, but this is the magic right here. I mean, this logo, it's pretty cheesy looking, but this is the magic right here. This video is the magic, and this is the magic in your business. It's not going to be what these color schemes are, or what the layout is, or how these things look. This video is the magic in your business. And if this video is great, your website's going to be great. Your business is going to be great. If the video is terrible, well, Nothing we can do with this website is going to change that. We give you all the tools. Uh, we haven't put any of the upsells in here. We haven't put in even 20% of the upselling capability of this system. But you can see how one hour later you have a business, you're selling product, you have a website, you're fairly well connected, you have follow-up messages coming in. So that's it. If you want the uh, realistic answer of what it's going to take you to get up and running with the CloudNet 360 system, it's probably double the amount of time it took me because I've done this before, although I don't do it very often. So it took me a little longer than it would take probably one of our more hands-on e-business advisors. But, um, you know, two hours later, you're in business. That's it. I mean, all you'd have to do is follow these steps, watch this video for an hour, and then do the same steps in a, in a, for the next hour, and there you go. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's pretty long. Uh, we've gone through a lot of things. If you already have been using our system, it's probably pretty elementary to you because, uh, well, it is. But if you're new to the system or if you're thinking about using CloudNet 360, I think you can see just how easy it is to get this up and running. You didn't see me writing any code, but you did see me modifying a whole bunch of code within our site just by pointing and clicking and making things happen. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for participating. Have a great rest of your day. And if you haven't tried CloudNet 360 yet, take it for a 30-day test drive and experience the difference when you can sell more faster with a system like CloudNet 360.